All right. So this is a, an a sample that I created. It's basically to, oh, actually, I should say who I am first. So I'm Derek Cash Peterson. Uh, I'm a principal architect at Simpraxis Consulting. I work with Julie. I'm a member of the PMP team, and I do a lot of uh, UX design and development work. All right. So the thing that I was really trying to do here um, is I spend most of my time with our clients, you know, either showing data, creating data, editing data, sort of all of those CRUD operations. We've got to get information from people, put it somewhere, and then display it back. Um, and so I wanted to give a way to, to do that using an adaptive card extension. And when you start looking around at the, at the either the different samples that we have, or just in general looking at samples out there in the community, is a lot of them are just really based on like plain text values. And while that's really important to sort of get your feet wet, I started thinking more about, okay, well, what about choice fields? What about multiple choice fields? What about people fields? How do you, how do you work with all those different field types that we have in SharePoint and then integrate those with the adaptive card framework? Um, and so that's what I wanted to do. This isn't sort of a, a production level thing. It was more of an exercise for me to show how to do CRUD operations and make the link between adaptive card extensions and the card views and our SharePoint and our SharePoint stuff. So that was the slides. I spent more time trying to get it working than I did. <laughs> um, all right, so I've showed the slides. So now I'm gonna actually show the demo. So um, this is the card that I created. And on the dashboard, it has two, you know, it has two buttons in the card view. Um, you can view the items. So you can see the items from the list. And the way I built this is it, it's, uh, it's pulling the items that were last modified or created by you. Um, and it's showing just the title, the last modified, and then who modified it. Um, we've got some icons for uh, display view. So you can see the values coming out of the SharePoint list. And I went and I, I really just went down the list of all the different types of fields that we could create. So I did title, uh, multiple lines of text, a drop down list with a choice field. Um, a date field, a radio button, a multi-select checkbox, a number, currency, and a yes-no field. Um, I looked at adding things like MMS and the people picker, and actually up until like last week, there wasn't a way for us to do a people picker, but now there is, so I will update this. And there's also a sample in the gallery that I have to approve to, to do that. Um, there's the ability to edit the item. So obviously we're passing in the data from the individual item um, and we're providing different drop downs here uh, and different interfaces for that. And then we're providing a way to delete them if you need to and also create a new item. So you can do it that way. So that's the ACE um, and what it does, but more importantly, it's really about what the code is doing. And so that's really where I wanted to sort of dive in. So all the stuff, we've talked about ACEs before, and so I'm not gonna sort of dive into the sort of the inner workings of how that works, but I did wanna start by just showing I created a service, and when the service gets instantiated the first time, the first thing it does is it goes through and it checks to see if the list that it needs exists. Um, because this is a demo, I wanted to make sure that um, the, the list was created with the right with the right fields and the right names and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so it runs through and if the list doesn't exist, it comes through and actually creates all the different fields um, with the different values. So I've got a drop down list that's adding in three different choices, a radio field that's adding in three different choices and a multi select checkbox. So then once it's done, it actually comes in and it grabs the items by the user and so we're just using, I'm using PMPJS to grab the data from the list. And one of the things that I sort of, one of the gotchas that I, I sort of two main gotchas that I, that I encountered was the data coming back from a multi-select choice field comes back as an array, which is great. We like that um, from a data perspective, but when you need to pass that data to an adaptive card, um, to the form field, the drop down, the checkbox, um, you need a comma separated list. So I had to get the values from the choice field and then iterate through them and create a comma separated list. 
Um, so that was the first thing. The second thing that I ran into was um, I had to do a date time. I had to convert it to a string uh, using UTC time to make sure that the, the date picker would actually pick the dates right. Um, so I'm basically pushing everything into a giant array and the array gets stored into the state. Now, when, let's see. So when we're in here and we click um, edit, either edit or save, we can edit these items. Um, you can come in. And then these are basically the update item and save item are more or less the same. Um, but again, we needed to, I needed to take that comma separated list and I needed to pop it back into an array. All the string values, multi line of text, um, single line of text, single choice field, single radio buttons, all of those just pass through as strings. So those aren't really challenging in terms of just popping them in. But the um, but the choice field, the multi-select choice field did present a little bit of an issue there. Um, and so that was it. So the save and the update are really the same, except one calls update and one calls add. Uh, and then finally, from the service side, we're just calling delete get up item by ID and passing in the item uh, that you're looking at and then going through delete. The other thing that I wanted to point out is that in the demo, there's a lot of, it's moving cards back and forth. So if you haven't looked at this, it's something you should just check out um, because this is a uh, this is a, the quick view. Then I've got a separate card for, um, for display and another card for edit and then delete, just deletes it. So when you're doing that, you have to make sure that you um, create IDs for all your different views. Uh, and then when you're in the views uh, and you need to click on the different buttons, you can actually call those views and you call them by doing this dot. And so these are all part of the quick view. Um, so the quick view navigator, and then you're doing a push. So you're telling it which one you want to go to. And in this instance, I've clicked the edit button and I want to go to the edit screen. In this instance, I'm going to the display view. So I want to go to the display view. So the sample also shows how to navigate back and forth between the different views. All right. And that's the demo. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Derek. We had some questions, so you might want to oh. check out the chat.